Hey guys, Tom here again from SynthHacker.com. If you've been a subscriber for a while, you might remember my video last year on creating organic synths in Serum. In case you missed it, the premise of that technique was to use pitched samples to create custom wavetables in Serum, allowing you to create much more interesting patches. Now, although that video went down well, there were quite a few of you that experienced some issues with this, mainly including samples sounding distorted after dropping them into Serum, even after cleaning them up in the wavetable editor. <laughs> This has been a huge frustration of mine over the past year when creating patches, but since then, after some experimentation, I've finally found a few ways to solve this, which I'm going to share in this video. Just before we get into that though, I'll quickly mention that all of those presets from my original video are still included with every pack over at synthhacker.com, as well as the new sounds you'll hear in this video. If however, you're mainly just interested in the wavetables themselves for making your own patches, for a limited time, I'm actually giving those away completely for free in exchange for signing up to my email newsletter. If either of those options interest you, then check out the links in the description below. So as a quick recap, this technique involved taking a short pitched sample, typing the pitch of the sample into the wavetable editor before dragging and dropping it into Serum, then finally using an LFO to sweep through the wavetable position at a similar speed to the original sample duration. From here, the sound can be used as a more interesting starting point for creating patches. Now, although in this example, the wavetable sounds very close to the original sound without any messing around in the wavetable editor, a lot of the time this isn't the case with the result sounding messy and distorted. So before going over the new techniques I've discovered to solve this, it's important we first cover the basics. Firstly, we wanna make sure that the sample is short in duration. I've found that between 0.5 to two seconds generally works best. In regards to pitch, we also wanna make sure that the sample is monophonic in the sense that it's a single note sound. Chords won't work. Most importantly though, you wanna make sure that the sample you use has no pitch bend. For example, if we take the sample that previously worked, load it into an instance of simpler and add some pitch bend, and then try the same technique again, we can hear that the pitch bend results in a lot of distortion. In this case, it's probably worth just choosing a different sample, but sometimes, if possible, you can get around this by cutting out the portion of the sample that contains the pitch bend. For example, some brass samples have pitch bend at the start that you can simply remove by moving forward the sample's starting playback position. Additionally, for sounds with vibrato, one workaround is instead of typing in the pitch manually, dragging and dropping the sample onto the dynamic pitch follow function. Something I discovered quite recently is that Serum's wavetable pitch calculation is designed with 44.1 kilohertz sample rates in mind, so make sure Sure to stick with samples with this sample rate. This was a game changer for me, especially when trying to use random files I came across for free download online, which can sometimes vary drastically in sample rate. A quick way to check this is by clicking on the audio file within Ableton itself and checking the audio information in the bottom left corner of the screen. If the sample you want to use doesn't have the right sample rate, you can always just load it into Ableton and export it at 44.1 kilohertz. So now we've covered what to bear in mind in terms of sample selection, let's start diving into the wavetable editor itself to explore some more techniques. Sometimes even after taking every precaution when choosing a sample, it's possible you'll still end up with a distorted wavetable. The first thing to play around with if this is the case is the pitch value we enter before importing the sample into Serum. For example, this bass guitar sample, is based at a C3 MIDI value, but sounds distorted when we use a C3 pitch value. If I instead type in a pitch value of C1 and then drag in the same sample again, 
along with bringing down the octave of the oscillator to compensate, the result sounds much cleaner. This has to do with the different number of samples a file is split into, which you can see in the brackets corresponding to different pitch values. Something to look out for when cycling through waveforms in the editor is if the sample amount is too low, the waveforms will appear to drift forwards, and inversely, if too high, they will drift backwards. You can fine tune this by typing in a custom sample split value for your pitch instead of a note. It's good practice to try different values around the sample's pitch until the waveforms appear static when cycling through the wavetable position. Now, for me, even though experimenting with the pitch value an octave seems to solve a lot of issues, I frustratingly still found some samples still had a lot of distortion. That was until a recent discovery I had. In my original video, I covered how you can increase the grid size and then fade the edges of each waveform to create a smoother wavetable with less distortion. Although a higher grid size amount can work with some sounds, what I've discovered is this isn't always the case. The distortion stems in the change from waveform to waveform being too extreme. This means that when we cycle through these waveforms, Serum can't keep up with these changes, resulting in the distorted sound we hear. The key technique I've found to solve in this involves the horizontal grid size. When we reduce this, you can see in the wavetable editor grid that it allows more space at the start and end of each of the waveforms to fade into each other. Even though our vertical grid size is still fairly high, now we've reduced the horizontal grid size, we can click process, X fade edges grid size, and now when we play back through our wavetable, the distortion is gone. From here, you can experiment further with the lower you set the horizontal grid size, the less distortion there'll be, but also the more synthetic the sound becomes. It's really just about finding the sweet spot. With our wavetable now distortion free, we can save it and use it to create awesome sounding presets. So there we have it. These techniques have solved about 90% of my issues with distorted wavetables, but it's important to know that sometimes, even with all of this in mind, some samples just simply won't work. If this is the case, after trying all these techniques, it's best to just move on to trying something else and saving yourself the frustration. There's an almost infinite amount of sound sources you can use for this technique, whether it's through samples you find online or that you sample from your own plugin and sample collection. In some cases, even if there's a little bit of distortion present, you can mitigate this by shaping the sound with an amplitude envelope, using filters, or even adding noise. Most of the time, in the context of a mix, it might not even be that noticeable anyway. If you yourself have discovered any other tricks you'd like to add to this video, please do comment below as I'm sure other people like myself would really appreciate it. As mentioned earlier in the video, if you'd like to grab yourself the presets from my original video, including the brass, strings, kalimba, and road sounds, as well as the presets you've heard in this video, they're included with every pack over at synthhacker.com. Additionally, if you just want to grab the wavetables themselves for creating your own patches, you can find a download in the description below to sign up to my newsletter and grab those completely for free. I'm also working on some future Serum videos that make use of this custom wavetable technique that I'm excited to share. So to be notified when those come out, maybe think about subscribing and clicking the notification bell. That's all for this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.